Okay, uh, welcome everybody back to Blaze of Cruelty. This is episode three. Um, real quick, just announcements. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna stay on our regular schedule for this. Uh, unfortunately, Daniel won't be with us on the twenty first because you're gonna be out of the country. Yeah, hopefully you're gonna have a good time when you're there. I hope so. I'm sure it's for work. So, um, other than that, I don't think we have any other announcements. Uh, I know I haven't been streaming a whole lot lately, and a lot of that has to do with me just trying to recover from, um, my injury earlier this summer. Um, a lot of it's just, you know, regular days are wiping me out, so. Aside from that, I think we're good to go. So I'm going to do a real quick recap and then we're going to jump in. So last time the party left the um the training center arrived at uh the barbecue place in town and uh, I think it's Crickets uh barbecue and grill had lunch there, talked with uh Corporal uh Kara, I believe Doolahan, yeah, Corporal Kara Doolahan. See, I made these characters, and sometimes the brain's just like, yeah, you know what? You're gonna forget everybody. Um, yeah, Corporal Kara Doolahan, and um, talked with her a bit f about what's been going on in town. Got a couple of leads, um, some information, and then went across the street, literally across the street to the Skirboro Salamander Farm, and began the quest line to take out what has been hunting Lester Skirboro's crops. Or not really crops, more like herd. Uh, you talked with the uh, adopted tiefling girl um, and the teenager very briefly, and then you decided to bait the creature and try to capture it rather than slay it uh, that night. So you set up a uh, sort of um, trap. You took a creature, I, uh, a salamander. I think you named him Bait. Literally named the Bait Bait. Uh, and then you began to put yourselves in sort of a hunter's blind uh covered yourselves with like leaves and and over a blanket and that sort of thing. Um, and so I had you guys space yourselves out wherever you wanted to be around bait. And I'll go ahead and show everybody what that looks like right now. Oh, hold on, I gotta change something here. Move, yep, there we go. Okay. Yeah, some people might argue it's the perfect plan. Okay. So, uh, this is where we will begin. It's going to be one of these kinds of sessions. And, yeah, uh, I'm going to have you guys roll stealth checks for me. I'm going to get some appropriate ambience going on there. <laughs> um, where is your roll? Oh, 21. Wow. Yeah, 21. Natural 20. You completely disappear from you. You may notice that your allies have disappeared from view, um, or they may not have. But in all cases, you may notice a little Heidi kind of hooded character in the top left-hand corner of your token, and maybe in the top right-hand corner of your screen next to the chat log. Um, that just that just shows that you're hidden. That's the hidden symbol. That means that you are in stealth. When that goes away, that means you have been spotted. Um, Sometimes that will not go away until every creature spots you, or I may, or I drop it manually. But that means you're currently hidden at the moment. So let me just go ahead and put on some music.
Yeah, this one's streamed. So we've so we've got um, an audience of zero probably at the moment, but that's okay. Okay, so you all took your positions. Are you happy with where you are currently? Okay. Alrighty. Oh. Oh, that is right. Yes. Um moments ago before thank you for reminding me. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh uh Last time you felt a powerful spell um, over in a direction um, or some kind of profane magical energy wash over you all um, around this time of night, a couple of minutes ago. It put you all on edge and a couple of you detected the, the exact direction that it was coming from. The Northwest. Um, and the others did not. All of you has, have some kind of latent or, uh, nascent or natural magical ability. So. Okay. All right. Uh, perception checks, everybody. Ooh. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's Bates' perception check. The eyeball is the uh, counter um, symbol for the Heidi person. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Okay. Um, as you're kind of waiting and looking around, listening, um, you see a big shadow come down, land next to bait, um, and it is right am amongst you all very quickly. As it lands, it sort of whirls around and uh, it meets each of your gazes. It spotted you. Uh, I'm going to show you the creature now. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to roll initiative. So I'm going to pause real quick. I'm just going to... Definitely not. It spotted you about 40 feet away when it was coming in for its landing. A big red. Yeah, I haven't put the system into combat mode yet. And now you can roll initiative. Bait with the big 15. OK. 
fact. Okay. It's not rolling for you? Uh, okay, hold on. There you go. Uh, James, you go first. As it lands, it rolled the poorest, despite knowing you were there. Okay. You are still prone, yes. Uh, well, it'll tell me in a second. An attack roll against the creature has advantage. It doesn't affect... Uh, you have disadvantage on your attack rolls. That's the second part of it. So the creature has disadvantage on attack rolls. That's the second part of uh, prone. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 21 hits. Roll damage. Five piercing damage. Okay. Uh, is that it for your turn? Okay. There you go. You've got inspiration. Okay, uh, Rianne, your turn. It's 10 feet, it's 10 feet from you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have your token selected under token controls? Top left, it's a little, the person thing. And then uh, to move, it's the chamfered square. Okay, hold on. Can you see it now? All right, hold on. Uh... Try refreshing your page.
Uh, it's yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it is just naughty. There you go. I see you popping in now. Mm hmm. Mm, okay. Rian configure ownership. Oh shit, there you go. Uh I accidentally revoked the ownership from you when I meant to revoke it from Gabby earlier because you were gone the first episode. That's just a me my brain being dumb thing. Yeah. Uh, too close. Yeah. You're you're on it. You can't be, you can't occupy one of its squares. Yes. Yep. Ooh. 11 hits, uh, 19 hits. Yeah. Seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, you should have extra attack. Yeah, you have one, you have two attacks every turn. That's under your features. Okay, just a moment there. Okay, go ahead and roll your attack. 23 hits. Roll damage. Button. Go. Okay. There it goes. 12. That's pretty good. Okay. That's your turn now. All right. Timothy. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. That just hits it. Mm hmm Okay, yeah. Smite. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, eight more. Okay. Uh, it is now Bait's turn. Bait is unhappy with this development. Uh, and he's going to use his tail whip on the creature. And bait uses tail whip. 
bait fails. Yeah. It was not super effective. Okay. Uh, with that failure, he's going to try to scooch away from the griffin. The griffin is going to take a claw attack on bait. This is an opportunity attack. Yeah, that's a miss. Bait's gonna... Get the hell out of there. Go, but he was tied, so he's he can't go too far from where he was. I believe you guys had him on a rope. So he's kind of just like, he ran all the way out here. And then he's kind of like tugging at the edge, trying to get away, trying to find an, an edge that he can get away to, exhausting his movement. Uh, he's got five more feet, so he's going to go that way now. Okay. Uh, that's the end of Bates' turn. It's now Vera's turn. Ooh, okay. Um... Okay, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna put that back on you. Yeah. There you go. It's probably because it was you used it during the test. Yeah, I got it. You should be able. Yeah, you should be able to use it now. Oh, poor bait. <laughs> Can't. You, yeah, you can drop. You have a big square, don't you? Yeah, right there. Uh, it failed the uh, saving throw with a. No, but you can see it now. Mm hmm. Yeah, so this green fire kind of just splashes all over the ground it's sticking to the creature it's confused uh do you stand up and move okay just enough movement to get into melee with it okay No, it kind of works. It works more like a potion. You have to target yourself. I'll give. I'll give it back to you. There you go. I'll try it now. I, uh, I uh, targeted you with it. So, you should be able to use it. Okay, sorry. There you go. Uh, yeah, you've got the rage condition now. Um, but it, you can't cast or concentrate on spells while raging, though. No. No. That sentence, one, two, three, third sentence in there. So that would break it. Do you want to rage or do you want to not rage? 
Okay, so we'll clear the rage out. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, you still have your bonus action in that case. Mm, I don't see anything either. No. Okay. That, that'd be your turn. It's now the griffin's turn. Uh, let's see. It's going to use its Wing Blast. Can it get two of you? No. It can only get one of you. Yeah, it can only get one of you. Okay, it's going to get Rianne with that. Uh, so you need to make a strength saving throw. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, 21 saves, uh, so you don't get pushed back 15 feet, and you're not knocked prone. Uh, you take half the damage. So you took, f you take five. Okay, that's its wing attack, its wing blast, and now it's going to make two attacks. I was going to do an attack on Timothy, and then it's going to do an attack on, um... Vera. Oh, that 20 hits Timothy. I think seven points of beaky pokey damage. Yeah, and then the claws. Uh, 14 hits uh, Vera on the money, dealing 14 points of slashing damage. Okay. This is the end of the creature's turn. Uh, uh, you roll a um, constitution saving throw. You gotta beat a 10. Nope. 9. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to apply to the creature. Just gonna make sure. Uh, it's not in that menu. Okay, it's in probably this one. Thank you for that. Yeah, so it should already have this on it. It is. Pretty heavily wounded. Okay, that is the end of its turn. Okay. No. Uh, no. That misses. Oh, you you had uh, Rianne targeted. Yes, it would still miss. <laughs> uh... I have a, I have sound effects for that somewhere. Ah, there we go. 
Okay. Uh, is that the end of your turn, James? Okay. Okay, Rian, your turn. Uh, ten misses. That hits. Ten points. Okay. So after it bites, it turns and bites Timothy and then whirls onto Veracasa, slashing one of uh, her arm. Um, you swing in with your battle axe, your, that arm getting kind of knocked by one of the wings as it's doing this uh, whirling, twisting tiger kind of deal. Uh, and then you bring your axe back up and you cleave part of its wing. Okay, is that the end of your turn? Rianne? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay, yeah. We can't hear you. Whoa. She, okay. <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> now I'll never be able to use that emoji again. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's the end of her turn. Um, we're gonna scoot to you, Timothy. No, you're not. Not that one. You're not. You go to swing it with at it with a saber, and the other wing kind of knocks your sword up and out of your hands, and you focus the rest of the movement to catch your sword before it hits the ground. Fumbled. Bait! Uh, bait's going to move five feet in this direction, 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 and then five feet in this direction. He's getting close. It's very close to close lining Vera there. I think his stake was here. I think he was right here. So it's like that. Can you you can see my line, right? No. Okay. Well, if you draw a line from this square to where he is, it doesn't quite cross through Vera. Uh, that's Bates' turn. We're going to go back to Vera. Okay. We can hear you again. Yay. It happens to the best of us.
it's under uh, features. There you go. Now you're raging. Okay. Uh, rage, rage. You can reckless attack for ex for advantage. Um, you do have that feature. Okay, the rage will give you plus two bonus damage. It should include it. Yeah. Okay. Twenty three hits. It should now. Yeah, nine. Okay, so that was uh, 1d8 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2. Yeah, it added it in. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so nine points of damage. So you slash it, uh, the its hindquarters, as it's turning to face off with Timothy again. Uh, quite angry now, it's going to uh, do a full round of its multi-attack on you, Vera. Mm, first, the beak misses, and now the claws. Uh, the claws hit for 11 points. Uh, half to five. So, yeah, it... Yeah, cut it in half. So, and that was a good turn for it to cut in half, because that would have been yikes. Um, so as it's turning around to kind of slash at Timothy, um, it spins again on its back legs. It's kind of like doing this sort of like a standing um, kind of maneuver using its wings to keep itself aloft. Uh, and then it's using its claws and its beak as weapons. So, it's, you know, it whirls around again, uh, the wings kind of like brushing past towards uh, Rianne and Timothy as it turns to face you, and it takes a big chunk out of you with its claws. Uh, mm hmm Uh, yes. So I'll move you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe so, yeah, hold on. While you're raging, your friends have advantage of melee attack rolls against any creature within five, of you, five feet of you that is hostile to you. So it's the, so it's any creature within five feet of you. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that is the creature's turn. It is going to consider something. It's considering something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, it is going to try to take off as, as movement. So you guys can get, uh, opportunity attacks on it. Yes. And so is Timothy's. 24 hits. Mm-hmm. 
What's what are you thinking? Okay. And with that, do what? Okay. Why are you attacking? Oh, you, you know, you only get the one attack on a attack of opportunity. Yeah, it's okay. Um, let's let's. Oh, that's gonna miss. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna make this. I'll I'll allow this. Uh, so you'll burn that channel divinity because that's a resource. Um, and it's gonna make a wisdom saving throw. DC thirteen. Okay. Eleven. Okay, so it can't move outside of 30 feet of you. So it's going to fly up to 30 feet and cannot will itself to m fly higher than that. Okay, that is the end of its turn. Uh, James, your turn. Okay. Uh, yeah, 20 hits. Four, four whole damage. Um, it's got cuts, quarrels in it, and, or crossbow both bolts. Um, and it, Bleeding pretty heavily. Okay. At least once. Uh, Rianne, it is your turn. The creature is 30 feet above you. It's bleeding pretty heavily. It looks really wounded. My infernal prayers. Help my companions by casting fairy fire on it. Oh. Yeah, just a big flame burst in the air. Let's see if it uh, fails the save. Uh, it's a saving throw for the creature. So what's the um, the DC on that? Should be in the text. Mm -hmm. uh, 13. It's a sa saving throw 13. No, that's okay. Um, it it's not in the text, so it wouldn't have told you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's in the technical data. So okay, uh, this creature gets a plus two to its dexterity saving throws. Um. And it fails, so it is now fairy fired. Uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it pretty. So there it goes. Okay. Timothy.
Okay. You're gonna kind of like visually search them. Yeah, make a perception check for me. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna say, like, because they're moving around and they're doing, uh, you know, they're doing the whole we're in combat thing. It's kind of hard to to spot and get your hands on one of their weapons. Um, you know, by the time your turn is up, you've spent the six seconds looking. You can tell Vera's got some javelins and, um. Rianne's got some hand axes, but they're, you know, again, they're moving around trying to, you know, keep themselves from getting killed. Okay. Okay, so it can move freely again. Yeah, so uh, it's Bates' turn now. He's gonna, he's <laughs> yeah, he's very, he's he, yeah, he's very, he's very upset. Uh, he's got five more feet of movement. He's become increasingly upset. Uh, Vera, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, yes, it looks like looks that way. That's a crit. Okay, that's critical damage. Are you trying to do lethal or non-lethal damage? Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let's let's see the big big damage number. Oh, okay. Um, go to your inventory. Uh, open up the javelin and then click damage and then click. Okay, close it and then open it again. It's a little. It's a little testy. So when you uh, open up your javelin, I, I deleted it. Don't click on the image to the left. Instead, kind of click on the word to open up the item. Um, to kind of expand the item. It should give you four buttons. Standard roll, attack, damage, and info. Just click damage. Okay, let me override it then. Uh, 18 points of damage. Uh, your javelin, uh, you let it fly. How do you finish the beast? Okay. Yeah, the javelin flies, passes into its neck. It kind of... And loses its uh, control over itself and then slams into the ground a pile of broken bones and twisted wings. Okay.
Uh, bait is running. He's just fucking off. Okay, the creature is dead. And what would you guys like to do now? Okay. Uh, make an Arcana check on that. Sure. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, you're, you're looking at the creature. It definitely doesn't look like a mutated variety or anything like that. Um, it looks normal. It doesn't have a command collar or anything like that on it. Uh, no brands, no uh, other marks. It seems normal. Sure, uh, make a nature check for me. You haven't used your bardic inspiration yet. That was... Okay. Fifteen. Uh, yeah, so this creature looks to be well-fed. It's been... Um, clearly been working on, uh, the Skirparos, uh, I keep wanting to say crop, I mean herd. Uh, it's healthy, it's the correct size for its age based on its plumage. Um, so all in all, it just got unlucky, you know, choosing to hunt here rather than somewhere else. It's a boy griffin. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, it should, if he does it, this, if he targets you and does it, it should increase it. And you, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're going to go over there and what, James? Collar him? Oh, okay. Uh, do you resist James? Cause she's coming at you. Uh-oh. Bit. Okay, um, so are you trying to grapple him then? Sure, okay. Uh, so, um, make an athletics check, Rianne, and uh, James, make an either an athletics or an acrobatics check to try to slip it. Um, 15 is the number to beat. 9. Okay, she's got you by the collar. Uh, and, yeah, okay. Continue your... Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, you can, you can try that, absolutely, just casually walk over here, and then here, um, how are you gonna try to knock him unconscious, because you have to do all the hit points, right, to knock him out. Thirty-five. No. You're not resisting, okay.
yeah, react like a uh, reaction, yeah, like oh god, she's on me, and you know. It's almost midnight. Okay. Uh, are you gonna tie him up? Or are you gonna just honor code it? Okay, so you guys have rope, right? Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um... You're... Right. Uh, so any good, evil as concepts uh, and celestial fiends and undead within 60 feet. So he doesn't give off any undead, celestial, or fiendish vibes. Um, his sword gave off a vibe, though. It was more of it. Let me look at the note, the, the note for the sword itself. Uh, I'm going to give you its alignment. I'm going to send that directly to you. Sure. Uh, while this is going down, James, um... To be perfectly frank, you're not paying as much attention to them as you should be, and you're aware of that because something else is talking to you. This is the first time this has ever happened. And only you hear this. You felt it, too. You know which way we have to go. Kill the wretched undead that walk the earth. Why aren't we doing that? We need to go and destroy every single one of them. Now! And I need you to make a um, wisdom saving throw. Yeah. Nine? Okay. Oh, oh no. Why is that so tiny over there? Okay. Um, you kind of feel compelled to head towards where you felt that profane magic before. But you are kind of, you are tied up and more or less restrained. I would say it's sort of overridden part of your will 
uh, and you're kind of subconsciously moving in that direction and you need to be corrected to move the direction that they want you to move. It's sort of like you're kind of idling, you know, in the, in that one direction. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's kind of what's happening. The two of you kind of notice that he's sort of out of it. Um, that's all. You just notice that he's out of it. Yeah. It's, it doesn't really feel like that. It's more like he's listless. Okay, so which way you guys want to go? Because you're, you're in the... Uh, which one? If you're talking about the one for the... Um... Yeah, the training center's over here, and the other one would be at the castle in the center of Sorath. See that? Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, you guys kind of go in this direction. For a while, James, the uh, presence that is speaking to you through the sword is uh, pleased about this. And then it's very upset that you're kind of moving in a direction that is not the direction it wants to move in. Uh, this lasts for about an hour. Um... And then you kind of, it kind of fades away. Uh, when you are, when you guys reach the training center, um, you know, you're, I assume you explain yourselves to the guards. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, they, yeah, they let you guys in. Um, they, They let you guys inside. Um, they put you in a room on the first floor that's unoccupied. It's not a not a uh, like a bedroom or a, or a barracks sleeping room or anything like that. It's just an office. Um, there's a couple bookshelves. There's a desk there, uh, and there's a guard posted at the door. He's kind of just. He looks like he's been pulled from guard duty somewhere else and is now posted to this room with the four of you. And uh, you guys have a few minutes alone here. At least you're comfortable now, James. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, do you do you share that with Vera in your native tongue or in yeah. common Korean? Okay. So. Uh, make it. What what languages do you speak? Okay, you speak Elvish. It has a cadence similar to Elvish. However, the vocabulary is very alien. So it it kind of flows like Elvish, but it has a totally different vocabulary. You have no idea what they're talking about. Sure. Wow, that's up to them. Yeah, 
Okay. Uh, okay. So Timothy, you get between James and Rianne when Rianne goes to search him. Mm hmm. Okay. Noted. Mm -hmm. Can you adjust your mic? Um, we, I heard you, but you sound a little far away. There you go. That's better. Um, so... You would have already been briefed about the common occurrences in relation to demons. So if you're if you if we're talking about the Valgas lore pages, you're generally aware of all of the stuff in um, the. the collected texts regarding spirits, the spirits known as uh, demons. So this is a uh, work that is a collection of unknown quotes, uh, quotes attributed to unknown authors. Um, several of them are specifically about spirits tempting people. Um, and it's also, there are other there are countermeasures in those as well. You do know them. Uh, for example, you are aware that a manifested demon could um, slay hundreds of people easily if it is strong enough, depending on what kind of demon it is, where it is in the hierarchy. Um, you are also... Yeah. 
Yeah, you... Yeah, uh, you could do that. The um, another thing that you could do is, uh, you're also aware that of the counter measures, um, iron, silver, garlic water or garlic itself, salt water or salt itself, holy water, um, those kinds of things will, uh, mess with a non manifested demon. So a spirit itself will uh be unhappy if you treat it with any of that stuff. Um, so you guys would be aware of that. Like I said, you'd have a working understanding of how to stave off those kinds of spirits because of the times you live in now. Uh, so do with that information what you will. Uh, yeah, you could roll uh, an Arcana, because this is more of an Arcana kind of deal, um, since we're dealing with demons or um, their non-corporeal forms. Yeah. Okay, a uh, 13. The um I got to roll for the sword now. So, hold on. Okay. The uh the elvish blade there um does seem to have some runes inscribed on the hilt. Those could be uh spell work. Um it could also hold a presence. It is in its scabbard. It hasn't been drawn. Um, because James only used his crossbow. But from what you see on the hilt, you recognize that that... Uh, you don't read Elvish. Oh, you do read Elvish. On the on the hilt, it's, it says its name, um, Tears. Yes, not tears, but tears. Uh, make a history check. You... It's it's on la it would be under languages under your attributes page. You don't speak Elvish, unfortunately, Rian. Mm. 
Okay. Um, you don't speak uh, Elvish, Rianne, so I'm going to have you roll this um, with a higher DC. Oh, no. James, are you here? Raven? Ah, oh. okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, with an eighteen, uh, no, you don't. You don't recall anything about a sword named Tears. I wanted you to destroy the undead in the direction that it wanted to go, in the direction from where that profane spell was done. As if summoned, <laughs> uh, he cut the silver knight, uh, Joaquin Redgrass comes in, says, okay, I was having a very nice dream involving a blonde and a bottle of wine. This better be good. Uh, what? Hold, wait, I don't recall asking anyone to kill a griffin. Oh, that's a, that's a heavy, uh, accusation there. Do you have any proof? Uh huh. Okay. Do you have anything to say about this, Mr... What's your name? And he, go, he starts rifling through your stuff. Uh, and he finds your denty. And he looks at your identification. Mr. Ornoris says here that you were in Fordath. You were born in Fordath. Um, says you were married. And, okay, so 
What are you doing so far away from your property, James? Why are you here in Sorath? Who, who is they? Who's they? Okay. All right. How... Mm. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, he takes the scabbard off of you, um, unbuckle unbuckling your belt and lifts it up. Uh, this is an elvish weapon here. Uh, how did you get this? Okay, was your... wife elvish? How much elvish are we talking about here? Okay, um, I'm going to have to call someone. I'm gonna, Mr. Ornoris, I'm going to take this into another room entirely. I'm going to put it under lock and key. It is your property. However, if it's determined to be malefic in nature, it'll have to be destroyed, okay? Do you understand that? Okay. Okay. Um, any, did you feel anything when I took this away from you? Uh, yeah, you kind of feel like um, the power has left you. The, the ma a lot of the magic that you have has just left you completely. Yeah, all your all your warlock stuff is gone at at this moment. You're basically just running off bard. Um, you do still have your hit points from warlock and all that stuff, but you don't have any of your magic from warlock, and you don't have any of your feet any of your features now that the sword is in someone else's hands. Uh, which one is that one? Uh, okay, so that one is... Yeah, that one's Dark Vision Plus. I'm going to say that it's that's starting to go away slowly. So it's reducing... I'm going to say it's going to reduce like one foot every hour. That one's more of like a permanent change to you from the... Uh, from the magic, that one's going to take a lot longer to leave you. So you still have that for now, but it's going to go away very slowly over time until the swords return to you. Um, so he he has the weapon now, and um, so I'm going to unequip it from you. And, he's, and he says, okay, I'm going to take this into another room. Do you feel any different now that I, now that I have this? Drained. Okay. All right. Um, okay. You're probably going to be okay. I'm going to take this into another room. You all stay here real quick. And he's going to leave.
Yeah, it's, I mean, it's raining pretty heavily outside, but yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna still be. The Silver Knight comes back and says, all right, what we're going to do now um, is we're going to, it's been, a, it, it's the middle of the night and these sorts of things are more powerful during this time of day. We're going to keep it under lock and key here. I'm going to suggest you, the four of you, Go to where your boarding is. Let me know where that is. I suggest you, he points to you, James, don't go anywhere um, outside of town, right? You stay within the general vicinity. In fact, stay with these two ladies if you can. Um, Baroness, can I talk to you for a moment? Okay, he's going to leave the room with you and you guys are going to talk in a different room real quick. Leaving Timothy and Vera in the room with James. So he takes you aside, Rian, and into another room, closes the door. He says, all right, so in these cases where we have a possessed object influencing a person, usually when we take it away, whatever influence it had over the person disappears completely. Sometimes the item, the cursed item or the, or the, uh, the uh, occupied item will disappear from custody and it will reappear on the person. It really depends on how far along they are. Now, some of these objects in the records have been aligned with um, hellish powers. Some of them are aligned with the light powers and some of them are aligned with the earthly powers. Being that it is an elvish weapon, it is more likely that it is aligned with the triumvirate of the elves than the earthly, hellish, or light powers. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So it's not that the object is malefic in a hellish sort of way or a uh, heavens sort of way. It is possibly connected directly to the elvish god of power or the elvish god of wisdom or the elvish god of justice okay it's probably connected to one of those three deities in some fashion it's gonna take a while for us to figure this thing out but from our perspective here the worst thing that he can do with it the worst thing that it's gonna probably compel him to do is start killing people and starting with himself. It's going to try to, it might try to find its way back into the hands of an elf. Does that make sense? So keep him away from elves. If he starts getting violent against people, it's probably going to be on himself first because it, if it's an elvish blade and it's an elvish spirit, it probably hates him. Um, For him in the long term. However, in his hands, it's no threat to us from a current war standpoint. It's good for us to keep t tabs on it, though. Yeah. I'm going to remand him to your custody for now. I don't think he's going to... I mean, even if he if he bolts and he leaves town, he, we have it. So, and it's it's under lock and key. So, no harm, no foul. He, you know, uh, but if he sticks around, um, and I, I'm gonna call for a mage. Uh, should be here in a couple of days. 
they'll take a look at it, figure out what's going on with it, and then they'll, you know, probably return it to him because it's it's not. Yeah, it freaks all. It's kind of kind of one of those things where. It's like, how do you have this? Oh, he had a wife who was partially elvish. Okay. Then she was one of the weird elves that's not a homicidal maniac, right? So, you know, it's probably fine. I'm just, just but better safe than sorry, okay? I'm going to explain, explain that to him in a minute, but I wanted you to know first. Thank you for bringing him in, though. Okay, so while they're having that conversation, Timothy and Vercasa, um... I'm going to let Rianne finish, and then you guys have, can have a converse, side conversation if you want. Go ahead, Rianne. I get that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's a hard thing. I We've all... All of all of the veterans up here, the people in charge of Setrak, we were on all in first expeditionary. You hate to bring, put a sword in a comrade when they go demon on you, but it happens and it's hard. But good looking out. Uh, that's right. That's the uh, that's the creed. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you two, you the three of you, if you wanted to have a conversation while they're out of the room, feel free. <laughs> yeah, you can you can dry off. There's I'm sure there's a towel rack or something. Mm -hmm. okay, the other two return. Uh, the Silver Knight says, Okay, Mr. Ornoris, uh, we're going to have a mage take a look at your sword. It's going to be a couple of days. I don't expect anything to be particularly wrong here i'm sure you're gonna get your property back uh i just want you to be aware of any undue influence that it might try to exert on you if you start hearing voices while it's in your hands or anything like that do your best to resist those voices mainly because these kinds of spirits that inhabit these objects are purpose-driven um, it's going to try to get you to do something probably extremely dangerous, probably extremely stupid. Try to not do that. Uh, if you find yourself doing the thing and it's not, you know, your body's not following your own commands, uh, tell a friend after, after the fact, if you have any left, if you haven't killed them all, um, to help you get rid of it. Okay. 
these sorts of things are very dangerous, and uh, I want you to be aware that, you know, if the mage comes by and says this thing's okay for him to have, uh, you should return his property to him. We, we will find you and we will return your property to you, or you could come here in a couple of days and get it, pick it up. Um, but, you know, if it starts talking to you, don't listen to it. It's got its own agenda, okay? That, that's all. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, what direction was that? Uh, oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. There, the graveyard is north of here. Um, the graveyard has a um, long history of guardian undead wandering its boundaries and also its interiors. Uh, the Undercity is also accessible from the Sorath Graveyard. I'm not surprised that it pointed you in that direction if that is something that it wants to do. That is, you can find undead roaming around there. That's why we do patrols there. It's not a safe place to go uh, for tourism or any other reason uh unless you are well armed and you are aware of the dangers okay so just be aware um that's probably why you know this is a thing that happens uh sometimes one of the undead that have been down there for a long time slips its bonds and starts to roam sometimes they're just a skeleton just a regular uh, skeleton, and sometimes it's something more powerful like a wraith or uh, something of that nature. Okay, uh, it probably you probably sensed that something like that, and the sword wanted you to go kill it. Perfectly normal. Not really. It's it's understandable. Is really what I'm trying to say. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. So a couple of days and you can come pick it up. Um, and if we can't give it back to you, we will compensate you for its weight in gold. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, you all are, are free to return to wherever you're being boarded. Okay. Hmm. He he looks pain. He said, "Oh yes, I forgot to write him a receipt. Hold on." <laughs> uh, current functions off of receipts. <laughs> so, good call. Okay, we're gonna. Make. Mm hmm. Okay. Save. And I'm going to put that in your inventory, James. You now have a receipt. I'm going to move tears out of your inventory for now. Okay. No, it's uh, five minutes after midnight. That little clock down there is accurate. So actually, you guys have started a new month.
you guys are about 700, 600 feet from the field. Okay, the Silver Knight leaves. Um, you guys are escorted out of the building. Are you guys staying at the boarding house? Okay. Uh, you you got you guys have two options. You could either stay at the boarding house or you can stay at the Serpent's Head Inn. Yeah, it's. Okay. So you'll head back to the Serpent's Head Inn. All right, let me load that. Move you guys off here. And... Move you guys back to here real quick. Okay. Yes, hello, puppy. You are a good puppy. Okay. I won't let her lie to me. And we're going to activate, and we're going to put your tokens on. There you go, Timothy. There you go, James. There you go, Rianne. And there you go, Vera. You should be able to move yourselves. Oh, no. Right now? No? No control there? You still have control from my end. Uh, try refreshing your page. Sometimes it does that when you're switching. Uh, Sigrid sees you all and says, Hello! Welcome back. I was about to lock up. She's going to come out behind you. And lock up. Yeah, you guys are kind of a mess. She doesn't comment on it, though.
Hmm? What's a tiefling? It's okay. Uh, they... Yeah, there's no shorthand for them now. Y yet. Yep. <laughs> Okay, uh, you guys want to uh, take rooms here? Uh, I think we lost Sen. Okay. Alright, so you guys, guys will... Uh, I think, yeah, Timothy, you already paid for a room. Let me, let me check what the price is for Serpent Set in real quick. Uh, overnight stay in one of the du- You're back! An overnight stay is five silver, which is the- which is core per night. Yep. It's five core for a night. That's the silver piece. Yep. Uh, oh, why do you guys have electrums? You sh okay. Uh, those are the bigger silver piece. You sh shouldn't have any of those because I was trying to normalize. Um, we'll break those into, um, silvers, so, let's see, it would be, oh. yeah, nine, uh, 45 silver, so, so, that's 49 silver total for you up there, there you go. Fix, fix that for you. I, I've noticed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yours is fine. Uh, let's see. And Vera's is fine. Okay. Uh, five silver a night. Okay. There are four rooms. You guys can double up or you can not double up. Yeah, the rooms are back here. That one's locked. Sorry, I didn't get to. I didn't quite get to locking that one before you opened it. That's the restroom. Yep. No, there's only one single room. There's one premium room, and then there's three double rooms. Yeah, you're in the single, because it's only got one bed. Mm-hmm.
You right? Are uh, you trying to get into this room? Mm -hmm. So Vera is in this room. Um, t uh, James is in this room. Timothy's in this room. This room doesn't have anybody in it, and this room is locked. Uh, it's this double up here. Uh, I believe they would have been speaking in dark in their uh, their dark elvish language. Yeah, the vocabulary is totally different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you guys head to bed. Anyone want to do anything before bed? Um, otherwise, we'll move to the beginning of the next day. Okay. Okay. So the only ones that work are your barred ones. Yes. And your regular barred spells would work if you wanted to cast those. So cure wounds, detect magic, speak with animals, and unseen servant. Those would work, but your pack spells don't work. Don't work. No, because you don't have the sword, so. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, we will proceed to the beginning of the next day. Yep. Long, yeah, you can long rest. So I'm going to change the ambiance from nighttime to daytime real quick here. Oh, you get back all, uh, all of your hit points. Yeah, if you just push the button for it, it'll it'll do it by itself. The button is in the hit dice box. Yeah, so where your hit... Yeah, so it's next to your, your box with your hit points. You just hit L rest. Ooh, you okay? Yeah, you... And once you have all taken a long rest, you may, of course, um, get up and go about your business. And I will alter the clock appropriately in a moment. So a man sitting at this table eating breakfast. <laughs> oh you oh i gotta yeah let me let me fix the doors then Uh, what are you trying to cast again? Yeah, uh, it, it turns out it wasn't a wasn't a nightmare. How broken up is James about this? Because this was probably like an emotionally uh, problematic moment.
Yes. So, I, just for roleplay reasons, this isn't a penalty or anything like that, I do want you to make a sanity saving throw. Yeah. Oh, very good. So, you're having a little bit of a moment, and you're thinking, it's okay. The, the sword is with the authorities. I have a receipt. Everything's going to be fine. You're a little anxious about, about this, but, you know, you're also thinking, it's probably good that the authorities check that thing out in the long run. We didn't have it checked out when she gave it to me. So maybe this is a good thing. Maybe I'll know more about it and maybe, you know, this will turn out better than before. You're trying to, you're being positive about this rather than uh, doom and gloom and, and anything like that. So. Yeah, you know, that's already happened. So I'm going to move you a little bit, a little bit further out if you're okay with that, James. Um, so, Rianne, you kind of step out of this room, and you kind of stride forward, and Vera, you're a little bit behind her, and Tim, uh, what are you doing here? You're kind of, did you take a spot at this table? Okay, uh, so you, Rianne, see Tim there, and then past him, you see this person, and you recognize this person. Yeah, you do. You recognize that person. Uh, that is Aelithal. He's a thin man, getting close to middle age. Uh, he wears red and white, and he sits and stands and does everything with grace. Uh, there's sort of a smell of old parchment and perfume coming off of him. His hair is red like fire, and his eyes are a light green, and he seems to be very confident sitting there. Uh, his vision kind of turns and he catches you and he kind of like stiffens and then he goes back to what he's uh, what he's doing really quickly, uh, which is eating. He's trying to finish his breakfast. Elithal, uh, he is Elithal Ver Ariash. He is Calvin's younger brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vera also notices him. <laughs> okay. Uh, and James, you're getting pretty close, so you're, you know, you see this also beginning to happen. So. Uh, so what were you going to do? You were going to come over here and talk to him? Rianne! Auntie! How are you? I did not expect to see you here in Sorath. Please tell me father didn't send you all this way for literal me. Oh, okay. That's a relief. Ah, um, so father sent me to go and retrieve him, and you know I'm not very good at the dirty work, and so I was going to hire people to find him. And then, then I did that, and yes, um, I don't see a problem with that. Uh-huh. Well, this was a while ago. Uh-huh. When you say it like that, it sounds really bad, Auntie. But honestly, I would only approve of the best mercenaries. It's not like soldiers are going to do this.
place for playing Captain of the Red and uh, getting to it on. Uh, would you like uh, just give her a thumbs up? <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks capable he looks capable I don't under how is Calvin a danger to anyone he's just confused and wandering the countryside he kind of he kind of stiffens a little bit. I don't understand what you mean, Auntie. You're a little close. Uh, he meets. Okay, uh, so he's dangerous. Mm hmm Okay. Make an insight check. Yes, you do. Uh, he's definitely hiding something. Mm hmm? Uh-huh. Oh, I... I honestly have no idea where he is. I haven't seen him. Is that all you've come here to ask me about? Uh, I'm not looking to get married or, uh, you know, do anything out of the ordinary for what I normally do, which is write poetry and enjoy my time. No? Okay. Give me another, give me another insight check. What do you want to do? Okay. Yeah. You can sit, sit down there. Yeah. Uh, now he he kind of leans back in his chair a little bit farther away. Okay. Okay, make an intimidation check. Okay, so he rolled a natural one on his deception. Uh, and he just breaks. And he says, uh... All right, I'll tell you. I saw him last month on the 30th, a couple days ago, outside Sorath Tower at the intersection. He said he was going to kill me if I told anyone. I have to get out of town. I have to go something by safe. He's going to know. Damn you! Ah. Yeah, he's going to try to bolt, and you, you, he's, he's, a, he's a noodle, so you've got him. <laughs> <laughs> and he sits. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wasn't really paying too much attention to what he was saying because he was very menacing and uh, I don't do well under that kind of pressure, Auntie. You know that. He just made me promise. He made me promise not to tell anyone that I saw him. And um, that was it. That was it. Really. Uh, he started heading out of town. Uh, the Southern Gate. 
Yeah, he rolled a natural one. He's telling the truth. Um, but he's also terrified. I mean, you scare him, but he you can tell he's more scared of, of Calvin right now. Yeah, he was alone. Um, I just gotten done with a meeting with, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Nikolai. Uh, Nikolai Versharen. Um, he took over governorship recently. Wanted to talk to him. You know, set up social events, that sort of thing. I left power. Uh, ran into, and he, he's nodding as he's saying this, uh, acknowledging your, your compliment. Uh, I, I ran into Calvin out in t the intersection. Uh, he threatened me, and I accepted the threat, and he left town. No, he was No, no, he was on foot. He was on foot. Okay. Uh, yeah, that works for me. I'm gonna leave town. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go straight back to the duchy, deliver whatever you want me to. Yeah, make a make an insight check. You're you you believe that he's going to you believe you've scared him so thoroughly that he will do exactly what you say. You're very confident of that. In the sort of way that like you're confident of that you've put a child in their place and you don't go check on them and then you turn around and they're running around with like a knife. Um <laughs> so he so he he manages to deceive you, but he doesn't manage to deceive Vera. Um, you know, that route takes him through Fordeth, and he's probably gonna. And he, you, you get the idea that he's gonna stop there for a few days, and collect himself. And by collect himself, probably get really trashed at the family manor there, and have a little bit of a good time, so he feels better about himself. And then go back to the duchy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the two of you just watch these two intimidate this guy into just, like, spilling all this sh stuff. He was not quiet about it, so you definitely heard it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're you're also picking up that they're related somehow, and that is interesting. Mm hmm. Okay. Um. Uh, so that's what you're doing. You're prepping a letter to go back to uh. The Ariash Duchy. Vera, you're having breakfast, I'm guessing. Tim, you're having breakfast, watching this unfold. James, what are you doing? Okay. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, she would have came over and brought you breakfast as well, um, you know, with a drink and all that kind of stuff. Um, and when you guys are done with this particular scene, let me know, and we can move back to the Sorath map. Um, we are also getting a little late. So normally we would go till 7.30. We kind of pulled over because I did want to get this scene in. Um, do we want to finish out the hour and go to 8 o'clock, or do you want to go cut it here at the end of this scene? Okay. All right, so we'll pick up back here next time, unless there's anything else somebody wants to do at the beginning of this particular scene. Mm hmm I, he kind of looks at you and says, you have no idea what these two are like. <laughs> and he says, Hon honestly, if you're traveling with the two of them, take out insurance on yourself. <laughs> it's never mind i'm not going to continue Going down this path. It is lovely to see you, Auntie. It's nice to see you too, Vera. Okay. And see. <laughs> All right. So we're going to push back here real quick and clear the log uh thank you everybody for coming out i hope the four of you had fun today um dan i'm gonna yeah dan i'm gonna uh, contact you later about um any instructions you want to leave uh if you, and if there's somebody in particular you want to quarterback you um or if you just want me to put you in survival mode what have you um Anything else, anybody? Uh, yeah, that, that went pretty well, I would say. So. Very, very first day that you guys are together. It's you guys are only on day two of your adventure here. Um, but putting, but pointing that out. So, you know, it's only been like twenty four hours at this point that you guys have all been together. So. Hey. Um, okay. Yeah, you guys gotta go back and pick up the sword in a couple of days. You know. Hopefully. You have your receipt. But who, you know what it happens when you come, walk into customer service with a receipt. Sometimes they just don't honor it. Um, but yeah, and if there's anything you guys want to talk to me about, uh, or check in on uh, like lore questions or that kind of thing. Let me know in between now and the next game. Happy to help there. Um, doesn't need to be radio silence at all between games. Happy to happy to help. Uh, and that's it. That's all. That's all I've got for me over here. I'm gonna. Sorry, what'd you say? Hmm. Yeah. That one's Daniel. Rape. 
Oh, fun. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna. No problem. I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna end the stream. I hope everybody had a good time.